Wow, oh! Have I mentioned that it's good to be in the Lord's house? I, uh, I, I think it's fitting today that uh, it started out this way. I, I told some of my deacons the changes was coming. I like to change. <laughs> if you've got your Bibles, I hope that you do. Now, I don't know how much of this I'm gonna be able to preach because uh, I got to thinking about one of these verses and when I get to thinking about one of these verses, I get kind of excited. But in Isaiah chapter eight, and uh, I, I want to uh, start, if the Lord will let me today, I want to start a, a new series. I want to title the series, What's in a Sanctuary? Now, I told you all some weeks ago that, uh, you know, we, we need to begin to ask for an outpouring of God's spirit upon the church and that there would not be that outpouring of God's spirit upon the, I, I'm telling you, I done got it in my feet and I need to be still for just a minute. But we cannot have an outpouring of the spirit of God in our churches and in our lives unless there are willing vessels that will say to God, here am I, God, fill me with your spirit. Brother Cole, it's good to see you here this morning, buddy. I didn't see you slip in, but I'm glad you're here. I, I, I think about the spirit of God and I think about the sanctuary. I, I gotta tell you, I don't want any longer to just be a church. I, there is the church and I'm praising God that I am a part of that, but I want to experience a place when we come to the house of God that we experience the presence of the almighty God and we begin to worship him in spirit and in truth. So I want to preach to you about what is in a sanctuary or what's in. What's in a sanctuary in Isaiah chapter eight? I, I want to begin to read in verse 13. It says, sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. And then it says this, for he shall be for a sanctuary. I, I run across this verse a little while ago and I got to thinking about, you know, a sanctuary, by the way, is a place of safety. And may I tell you today that there is no better place than you can hide than to hide in Jesus when the storms of life come. When Kyle began to sing that song about give me Jesus, I, I wonder this morning if you've got him in your heart, do you believe this? I, I just want you to understand that what you've got is the indwelling of the altogether lovely son of God and he wants to be your sanctuary. Whoo. That, by the way, is gonna be my key verse, I will come back to that several times in this series for however long did it last. But for now, if you will, I want you to turn over to the book of Exodus chapter 25. And uh, I, I wanna talk to you this morning about what's in a sanctuary. And I thought that the best place to go uh, is back when it was implemented, when God told them and in Exodus chapter 25, Begin to read in verse one. I know I've messed the fellas all up because I didn't give them verse one. I gave them verse eight. Now I'm aware of that. But in, in verse one, it said, the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel, that, whoops, that they may bring me an offering. Did you all hear that little one shout while ago when Mike said it's time to take up the offering? I, now listen, I, I'm not fussing at anybody, but, but God told Moses, he said, you speak to the children of Israel that they might bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. 
This is the offering which you shall take of them, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skin, dyed red and badger skin and, and shittim wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate and watch this, watch this. I, I got how many of y'all believe this morning? Now, now be careful because I'm about to get excited because when we come to you for an offering, I don't come to you because I need your money. I come to you, first of all, because it already belongs to God. But not only that, I get a glimpse of what I believe that God is about to do with your offering. <laughs> You say, oh, wait a minute, preacher, we got bills to pay. Surely we do. But look at what God said here. He told them originally, he said, I want you to take up a special offering and this is what I want it to be. And then in verse eight, God said, and let them, them, who's them? Oh no, y'all got to get on board. Them, who's them? We've had this before. This ain't hard. How many themens? Themens is usens. Let us get on board. Let us, he said, and let them make me, God said, let them make me a sanctuary. Now, now stop there. Don't read further. Remember, when I stop, you stop. God said, Moses, mm, man, I'm about to get myself in trouble. But you know what? This morning, I don't care. God said, bring me an offering and let them take that offering and make me a sanctuary. And I wonder sometimes what kind of sanctuary that we would be able to build. Now, I'm not talking about this building now, but I'm talking about a place where God said, let them build me a sanctuary. Now watch. This is why, that I may dwell among, remember a minute ago I asked you who them was? If you wasn't them, you're going to miss this. <laughs> But God said, let them make me a sanctuary that I might dwell among them. You know what God's desire is this morning? God's desire is that we might build him a sanctuary that God might come down and dwell amongst And You say, well, but preacher, what are you talking I'm telling you this morning, God, in the very beginning when he created man, he wanted to have a sweet communion with man, but sin broke the communion. And then God said, I want to be with them so badly, I've got to find a, whoo, man, I'm telling you what, in the beginning of time, before the earth was formed, the Bible says that God made a way to be able to get back to man and man to get to God. God desires to dwell with you so badly that he told them, you build me a sanctuary and I will come and not visit you. Woo, man, I'm telling you what. Some folks don't even want God to visit their churches. Because if God visits the church, preacher, how are we going to act? About like I am now. You say, oh, but preacher, you not get stirred up like that. Why not? I read in another place in the book when the Spirit of God came and got on them, the Bible said they began to act like drunken men. And they looked at them and they said, what's wrong with them? But it's not what's wrong with them. It's what's right with me. I've got a God in glory that doesn't want to visit me now and again. He wants to dwell with me. Woo! I'm telling you, if we get past the visiting stage, and just say, God, would you come live with me? That's, he said, I will dwell, I will 
be there whenever you come. God promised he'd be there. Get a little nervous. We, we don't, we like God to come take a, a visit now and again. But God don't hang around because God, if you hang around, what in the world is going to happen? <laughs> I'll tell you what's going to happen. If God hangs around in the church long enough, some of you are all going to get excited. You say, oh, preacher, are you fussing? Nope. I'm telling you that you can only hang out with God so long before God rubs off on you. And you say, oh, preacher, have you got any Bible? Maybe just a little bit. I read in the book about some fellas that was hanging around God. And the Bible says that they was before the throne of God day and night. And you know what they was doing? They, woo, man, I'm telling you what. When God comes to dwell with you, that means that you're living with God. And you won't be able to help except but praise him on an occasion. Woo, man, I'm telling you, that ain't in my notes. <laughs> but I like it really well. I think they're gonna be some praise. I come to get my church on. I think they're gonna be some praising of God in the sanctuary because God desires to dwell. Listen, I've gotta tell you what. There's some of you all I wouldn't wanna live with. Man, I don't believe that preacher said that. Some of you all wouldn't want to live with me either. But I've got a God in glory that looked down on a sinful man and he looked at that sinful man and he said, listen, Moses, I know that there is stiff-necked and stubborn and rebellious people, but I, oh man, I want to live with them because I love them. And so Moses, he said, tell the folks to build me a sanctuary that I can come and live with them. Mm. Man, I'll tell you, I began to read up on this here sanctuary, this dwelling place of God, and I gotta tell you what. Now, if the Lord let me for just a little bit, I wanna preach to you this morning the first part of this series, and I wanna title this part of my message, Don't Let the Outside Fool You. I, I don't know why I did. I've been saved for 34 years, been preaching about 30 now, and I always thought that this dwelling place of God that they was getting ready to build, I always thought that it was some magnificent something, some huge something in, in the middle of the wilderness that would mark where God was. I got to reading about the tabernacle that God was talking about for them to build, and I found out that it's about 15 feet wide and it's about 45 feet long. And I thought, man, that ain't much of a tabernacle for my God. But you know, I got to the reading on it and everything that was going on in it and all the things that the priest did. And then God began to speak to my heart. And I began, I pulled up pictures of the tabernacle on the internet. Those that everybody, you know, had depicted this as the way that they thought that it was. But I began to read in the scripture. And I've got to tell you that the tabernacle on the outside, it was just quite Plain. Mark, I love you, son, but you're just kind of plain. You say you ought not, you wait till I get toward the end of this message and you'll understand that statement, and Mark already does. But I begin to think about this here tabernacle, and the Bible said, I, I might as well read it so that you all can get it. God told them, he said, let them build me a sanctuary. In Exodus chapter 26, he, he began to tell them, he said, I, I want you to make, if you will, some curtains or some coverings for this sanctuary. Now, I, I want to preach to you, don't let the outside fool you. In verse 1 of chapter 26, he said, moreover, Thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twine linen, blue and purple and scarlet, with cherubims of cunning work shalt thou make them. And I looked up 
you know, what everybody else was saying about this covering of this tabernacle. And it was, by the way, it was the first layer. It was the one that you could see from on the inside. And oh, by the way, you know, I might as well just say this before I ever get any further. Because if I don't, I'm about to bust. You know, you know that there was only a select group and then a select few that got to see the beauty of the inside of the tabernacle that they built in the wilderness. And you say, preacher, why in the world are you saying that? Because I'm telling you that in the world in which we live, there's still only a few, a select group that can see the beauty that's on the inside. Y'all can hold on to that and I'll preach on it in a few weeks. Or I might just preach it all out. I don't got anywhere I got to be till six o'clock tonight. Watch this. He told them, he said, I want you to make some curtains to cover it with and I want it to be fine twine linen. I want it to be blue and purple and scarlet and then in the midst of all of that, I want you to sew picture, pictures of the cherubims uh, all over this here curtain. Now, for those of you that don't know what a cherubim is, you'll find them in the scriptures and every time that you get close to a cherubim, <laughs> you get mighty close to God. Every time that you get, and if you want to read, you can go over in the book, and you don't have to go there now, but you can go over in the book of Ezekiel and you can read about them. You can read here about them. You can read over in Revelation about, I'm telling you, every time that you get close to the cherubims and the mercy seat, you are getting close. So, so this covering, when you peered it from the inside, let those on the inside know that they was about to get really, really close and personal. Oh, wait. Personal. Did I mention that God wants to dwell with you? It's personal. He said, build me. We sing that song, don't we? That one that said, oh, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Man, if I could sing. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Man, I'm telling you what. He wants to dwell. He wants to live with you. Now watch. He told them. He said, after this, in verse seven, he said, thou shalt make curtains of goat's hair to be a covering upon the tabernacle. He began to tell them, he said, 11 curtains shall thou make. And what he did, he told him, he said, I, I want you to make these real pretty curtains. And he said, I want you to cover the tabernacle with the curtains that got cherubims in them. And then I want you to make some curtains of goat's hair and cover up the cherubims. I thought, man, Lord, why in the world would you be gonna do that? Well, he ain't done. Then he told him, in verse 14, thou shalt make a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red and a covering above of badger skin. Got to thinking about that, the dyed red one's easy. <laughs> Cause you see what happened here. They covered up the cherubim with the goat's hair. Then they covered up the goat's hair with the one that was the ram skin dyed red. That by the way, was a representative of the blood that was shed. And you say, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, let me tell you this morning that the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And therefore, there can be no dwelling place of God if sin inhabits it. So the sin has got to be covered by the blood. But the last one is the one that got me. It says, and there's gonna be a covering over top of the ram skin. So if you will, you've got the cherubim curtain, you've got the goat's hair curtain, then you've got the 
curtain of the ram skin dyed red and then you've got the covering of the badger skin and I got to and by the way some think that this may have been porpoises or something of that nature I don't know the Bible just says that it's badger skin but may I tell you when I looked at all of the portraits that I could find the outside of the covering of the tabernacle was ugly Monty Say, preacher, you ought not. You ought not talk about money like that. I did and he did. But I got to looking at this tabernacle that they built, this place that in my mind I had always thought was magnificent and gorgeous and beautiful to behold. But I got to looking and on the outside, it just looked kind of plain. Then I got to thinking, don't let the outside fool you. I'm going to have to skip. I have to come back later to Isaiah chapter 53. I'm going to go right on over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Because I, 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 want, I want, want you to see this. I got to think about this tabernacle that God wanted to dwell in, this dwelling place, this place that they built for God to come and to inhabit. And I got to looking at it and got to thinking about the fact that the outside of it was ugly. And I, I don't want the outside to fool us. But in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says this. It says, for we know that if our earthly house of this what? Remember I told you all a while ago I want some worship in the church? Remember I told you that in the sanctuary there's gonna be some praise? I, I believe in the sanctuary there's gonna be some songs. I, I believe in the sanctuary there are gonna be some tears that are gonna be shed. I, in the sanctuary I believe there's gonna be some hallelujahs and you say, preacher, why do you say that? Because I found right here that we are the tabernacle that God wants built so that he can inhabit. I got a few folks over here that got that. You all over here miss it all. Here's what I want you to understand. The Bible said, know ye not. Now listen to me. Know ye not that you are the temple, the tabernacle, the dwelling place of the most high God. And the Bible said here that this tabernacle, it is ours. It is our body. And we know that something, I've got to tell you, sometimes the outside seems to be tattered. Man, I feel like preaching. I, I feel like this is a really good spot to be because I got to thinking about every now and again when I look at the tabernacle, the dwelling place, the body, if you will, of God's people on occasion, the outside seems like that it's beaten up pretty bad. Any of y'all ever been through a storm or going through a storm? One of us, two of us. The rest of y'all saying, I don't know where that preacher's headed. I'll tell you where I'm headed. I'm headed to a place where I can be the tabernacle that God wants me to be so that when he looks down at this body, the outside, it might be tattered and torn a little bit, but on the inside, it's a habitation. Woo, man, I'm telling you what. It's a habitation for a holy God. This tabernacle, if it were dissolved, you know, most of the time, Things do not dissolve instantaneously. My tabernacle, by the way, it's dissolving. I know we don't like to talk about that, but I figured out that I'm not as young as I used to be. When I flex my muscles, they flex the wrong direction. Did that preacher... Yeah, my tabernacle is dissolving. It ain't in as good a shape as it used to be. 
I noticed when I get up in the morning and I look in the mirror that every now and again when I don't sleep like I didn't sleep last night because I couldn't, couldn't hardly get the message squared around them, I, when it's like that and I get up in the morning, I notice that the muscles underneath of my eyes are sagging. But don't let the outside fool you. <laughs> Cause if you read on, the Bible said, though this outward man perish. <laughs> well, I'm telling you what. I feel like I'm being renewed in my spirit this morning. Because though this outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. Whew, that ain't my notes either. Watch this. It said, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, I gotta tell you, sometimes we get too concerned about the outside. Y'all notice I got on a turtleneck this morning. I dressed down for the occasion. I got up this morning, I got out my dress shirt, I was getting ready to do it up and put it on, and the thought come to me, uh, where's your green turtleneck? Now I got to tell you, there was one time in a service God told me to wear my tennis shoes. I didn't understand why he told me to wear my tennis shoes, but I wore them nonetheless. Come to find out there was somebody that came that day and the only thing they had to wear was their tennis shoes. But they felt really good about being in the house of God because when they got there, the preacher, he's got on tennis shoes. May I tell you, it's not always about what we got on on the outside, but what's down on the inside. Oh man, I'm telling you, don't let this turtleneck fool you. Sometimes we get too caught up in this earthly body. We get too worried about whether or not that it's doing good. May I tell you if the Lord tarries one of these days, this whole body, they're gonna lay it down in the ground. But make no, don't let the outside fool you. Woo, man, now I'm feeling like preaching. I gotta tell you what, there is something on the inside of me that Jesus said, though a man be dead, yet, woo, man, I'm telling you what, yet shall he live and that forevermore. Man, I'm just, listen, if the Lord takes me out and a few of you all make it to come see my sorry carcass laying there, don't you weep for me. Turn around to the person in line next to you and say, don't let the outside, woo, man, I'm telling you, if you don't ever remember anything else I preach, remember, don't let the outside fool you when you look at me. Wow. I guess I'll come back and preach that next week maybe. I gotta tell you what, you know every now and again when the devil comes against you, this all brand new, but every now and again when the devil comes against you and it seems like that you've been beat up and you've been beat down, may I tell you, you ought to look back at that buzzard and you ought to tell him, don't let the outside fool you, devil. You might beat me down to my knees. I'm cast down, but bless God, don't let the outside fool you because when you beat me down to my knees, there is something on the inside that is gonna raise up and I've got to, oh man, I'm telling you what, the devil, he may be able to attack this mortal body, but bless God, when he comes in contact with what's on the inside, he, whoo, man, I'm telling you what, he cannot, he can't do anything with that. I told myself I wasn't gonna get stirred up. I was gonna teach you all this lesson. 
May I teach you one? If you're saved, you got the same thing on the inside of you that I got on the inside of me. So when the devil comes against you, tell the devil, don't let the outside fool you, devil. I've still got a song on the inside. Wow. There are some things I know. I know that if and when this earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolving, guess what? I've got, you all can say it if you want to, we have, but I have a building of God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. I got to thinking about this tabernacle in the wilderness. What's in a sanctuary? You know what? I hope somebody asks me today what kind of church you got. (laughs) I tell them I ain't going to tell you about the kind of church I got. I'm going to tell you about the kind of church I am. (laughs) Listen. There is a lot of things that is going to come against us in this world because the Bible said we're not of this world. But bless God that when this earthly body is gone, when it's dissolved, when it falls apart, when it hurts, when I get up in the morning, when they call me and they tell me that there may be something wrong, I've got to tell you what, all they're telling me about is this fleshly tabernacle. Oh, but don't you let the outside fool you. Did I tell you this morning that the reason that God told them to build this here tabernacle was because he wanted to dwell with them? (laughs) You know, you know, you know why God built this here tabernacle? Because he wants to dwell with me. He wants to live in me. Man, I'm telling you what. Watch this. Let me tell you a thing or two about this tabernacle. In verse two, it says this. For in this, in this tabernacle, in this body, it says we groan. Earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed but clothed upon. That mortality might be swallowed up of life. You know what he's saying there? Sometimes... Sometimes life, I told somebody the other day, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this out loud, but you know sometimes life stinks. Uh Uh-oh. Now, preacher, you know you just said that God's with us. Yes, I also said that this is a earthly tabernacle and sometimes life stinks. When I have to go to the hospitals, it stinks. When I have to go to the funeral home, it stinks. When I have to try to talk to somebody whose marriage is a wreck and falling apart, it stinks. But don't let the outside fool you. You see, because we're in this world. Now listen to me. But we are not of this world. <laughs> now listen. In verse 6, it says, Therefore we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, 
We are absent from the Lord for we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Whether, wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Every now and again, our bodies don't do what we want them to. Oh, y'all think I'm just talking about the physical. Every now and again, you might be sitting in church and your spirit says, praise the Lord. And your mouth goes, no. I can't. Listen to me. It's res whether I am in this body or absent from this body and present with the Lord, my main desire is to be accepted of him. This tabernacle, I got to thinking about what it must have looked like. I'll say this and then I'll close. When the enemy was on the hillside and they were looking down at God's people all camped around. And by the way, may I say that the tabernacle was the center of life for the children of Israel. The tabernacle of God ought to be the center of life for God's people. But I wondered, I wonder what it must have looked like when the enemy snuck over top of the hill and he looked down and he saw all of God's people camped around that little hut, that little tent, that little thing in the midst of a great big wilderness and he happened to look down on there and he thought when he looked at it, man, that thing don't look like much. Don't let the outside fool you. Because it's when you get on the inside of the sanctuary that things begin to change. And the outside, it may be ugly. The outside, it may be just a tent looking thing and not anything like what I imagined it ought to be. I don't know why after all these years, I didn't know that. I guess it just never registered that the place that God would choose to put his dwelling here on this earth from the outside, it was plain, it was simple, to some it was ugly and it didn't look like much. Oh, almost sounds like us, doesn't it? But if you're saved today, on the inside of your sanctuary, things will begin to change. What is it that's in a sanctuary? Mm. Sometimes you may not understand why life brings to you the things that it brings. Sometimes you may not understand why God allows the things that happen to you on this side to happen to you. Why that you must suffer the things that you must suffer. But may I tell you that the Bible said that when we suffer, we ought to rejoice in as much as that we are made partakers of the sufferings of Christ. Today, tonight, tomorrow, this week, from now on, might you tell the enemy 
Might you tell the world, might you tell your family, might you tell your friends what you're seeing on the outside may not look like much, but don't let the outside fool you. So I wonder, to all of you that are here today, what is on the inside? God said to Moses, he said, Moses, take up an offering. And he said, Moses, take that offering. And oh, by the way, by the time that we're done with this series, you will find out that everything, everything, everything that was taken up in the offering, God used and had them use to build his sanctuary. I wonder what you've offered him. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is that, preacher? God wants to dwell in you, and the only way that he can do that today, saved and unsaved alike, the only way that God can inhabit but you is if you are willing to allow yourself to be his tabernacle. Amen. You got a choice. Every head bowed, please. Nobody looking around in reverence to the Lord. I want to just simply ask you today, are you a tabernacle that God can dwell in? You see, understand that God will not cohabitate. He will not. You're either all his, all of you, he said. Give me all of you. I present myself a living sacrifice, holy. That word there is completely unto him. God wants all of you. So let me ask you today, have you held something back from God? He's looking in your heart right now. I want to ask you, have you held it back? Because if you've held it back, God knows that. And unless you give it all to God, all of it, unless you give it all to God. Well, I wonder today, every head is bowed and nobody's looking around. I want to ask you now, are you such a temple? Are you such a tabernacle that God can dwell in you? If there is something today that prevents that, Whatever it is, there is a part of you that you've kept back, a part of you that you've took back, a part of you that you've held back. God wants all of you. So I ask you today, is there something, is there something in your life that is keeping you from being that sanctuary of a most high God? If there is, would you be honest before God? He already knows. Would you lift your hand up and say, oh, there he is. God bless those hands and those hands and those hands. Is there something? God bless those hands. Uh, anybody else? Is there something? Preacher, I want to be such a sanctuary for God. And I know that I've held out and I've held back. I want to ask you today, is there something? Would you lift your hand up and take it down? Is there somebody else? Lift them up, take them down, all the way. God bless you. Thank you for your honesty today. Is there somebody else? Somebody else. God bless you and you. Is there anybody else? And you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Church, I'm telling you, I, I don't want, I don't want a church to be a church. I want a church to be a sanctuary. I want to be a sanctuary for the Most High God. So now I'm going to ask you, Brother Kyle is playing. Hands have been up all over this building. I'm going to ask you now, if you're serious about it, if it's if you're serious about it, I want you to bring whatever it is right now. I want you to bring it to God and give it to Him. Say, God, here am I. God, I, I want to be that place, that dwelling place for you. God, whatever it is that has prevented our communion, God, I want it again. 
coat. God, I, I'm going to give it to you. I know it's hard. I know it is. But you need now to step out and come and talk to God. Come on, while others are coming. Others are coming. You need to come and talk to God. You need to come talk to God. Come on. Don't wait. The longer you, you wait, the easier it is for the devil to talk you out of where you are. But if, if where you are is not where that you want to be, come talk to God. things in here today. Don't miss out on it. Don't miss out on it. Don't miss out on it. As we stand to our feet today, don't miss out on it. Don't miss out on it. It's your time today. This moment of time, it's for you. It's for you. It's for you. Come now. Don't, don't leave here. Still feeling that void in your heart. Don't leave here. Still holding back a part of who you are. May I tell you that if you're going to be a sanctuary for God, needs all of you. Come now. Come on. Come now. God is working a great work. He's moving in hearts. He's moving in lives. He said, simply, the purpose of the tabernacle is so that God might dwell in it. Your purpose today is that God might dwell in you. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come on.
Oh, oh.